All right. Good, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the October 22nd, 2019 Board of Selectmen's meeting. We're starting a little late tonight. We uh, went into executive session at 6 o'clock to discuss uh, um, a strategy respected to collective bargaining or litigation. Um, and now we're coming back into regular session. Uh, can I have another roll call, please? Um, all five selectmen are present, as well as town council and town administrator. All right, let's uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, Mr. Swenson, you can here to speak tonight. How about doing the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Awesome, thank you. All right, so I'm going to skip by announcements and stuff because we have a dog hearing that we have to uh, do. It was supposed to be scheduled for 715. Uh, and in accordance with the provisions of Chapter 140, Section 157 of Massachusetts General Laws, you hereby notify that a public hearing will be held before the Board of Selectmen on Tuesday, October 22nd at 715 regarding the dogs owned or kept by, uh, by Calvin Carnes. Is it Carnes? Uh, and uh, so for the purposes of the hearing, I'm going to turn it over to Peter to, uh, to perform the hearing because, you know, he's a lawyer and all that. So we give him some things to I do once in a while. Correct. Okay, a then. Lawyer. Here's your uh, file. He's, he's all right. Yep. Oh, he's a dog lawyer. He's he's a a dog dog lawyer. lawyer in fact. <laughs> Remember that. I've gotten, I've gotten dogs off of death row, so yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, we need a motion to open the hearing with a roll call vote, please. Uh, so moved. In a second, need a second to open the hearing. Sec uh, motion by Selectman Bruce, seconded by Selectman Benice. Benice. Uh, roll call. Alan? Yes. Jim? Yes. Mary? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Me? Yes. Okay, the uh, hearing is open. Uh, would the animal control officer please read the complaint letter into the record? I know I got it here. here go. September 26, 2019. I hereby make complaint hereon that dogs owned or harbored by Calvin Carnes, 11 Barrett's Way in Onset, Mass., are a nuisance by reason of number one, continuous barking. Starting on September 8, 2017 to this date, the Department of Natural Resources has had an ongoing barking dog issue with the above named dog owner, Calvin Carnes. We have issued numerous citations to the dog owner without resolution. Our department also made numerous suggestions on possible solutions to the ongoing barking dog situation with no avail. The complaints have included video evidence, officer confirmation that the situation continues to be an issue. The multiple dogs owned by Mr. Carnes, described as four cane corsos, are reported to be left outside at all hours of the day and night. The dogs are reported to bark nonstop while they are outside. In addition, we have had numerous complaints that these same dogs are frequently allowed to run free in the area. Mr. Carnes has been notified in writing of these complaints and failed to resolve the issue. Mr. Carnes' neighbors have requested that greater measures be taken and would like to have a hearing before the Board of Selectmen in regards to this matter. Okay, thank you. Uh, would everybody who intends to uh, testify tonight, whether it's on behalf of the dogs or complaining about the dogs, uh, please rise? Hold up your right hands, repeat after me. I, state your name, do solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Thank you, you may be seated. Uh, it's uh, still your turn. Well, what I'd like to do at this point is we have quite a few of the neighbors who would like to speak on their personal experiences with the dog because there's some um, disagreeing on whether or not the, the complaints <coughs> are factual. So what I'd like to do is have the neighbors come up and speak about their personal experiences and then allow the dog owner to um, give his side. Okay, uh, just uh, 
just for your information, Mr. Carnes, uh, you are allowed to cross-examine the witnesses when they come up. So if, if they say something, if you don't agree with it, you're allowed to ask them questions about what they've just said. Uh, your questions, ap after they're done speaking, you can't interrupt them. Uh, if there's, uh, and you have to keep your cross-examination limited to what the person has just said. You can't go, go far afield with that. But uh, can we have the first uh, neighbor come up and identify themselves, please? Somebody's got to be first. Should we have the dog owner come up as well? Yeah, he should, he should be sitting here as well, so he's... Okay. Sure, right. okay. Pull that nice and close, okay? Oh, okay. So you can be heard. Okay, can you hear me? There you yep. go. All right, can you Perfect. hear me now? <laughs> okay. All right, my name is Eve um, Marie Azeltine. I live at 7 Barrett Way. Um, I've lived there for about six years, and with all of the, the dogs that Calvin has had, um, I've never called to complain. I've never filed any uh, reports. Um, but I recently retired about a year ago. And I'm home more often. And um, the dogs have been barking constantly, um, all hours of the day, um, and nighttime as well. Um, and it's annoying. It's frustrating. I've um, sent a few reports through the town, and um, it just never seemed to help until they decided to do a hearing. Um, you know, I kind of feel bad for the dogs as well. I know there's a lot of squirrels in the neighborhood, and um, I'm sure he's, they're barking at the squirrels or barking at whatever, but when it's two or three hours and all hours of the night, you know, I kind of feel bad for the dogs. You know, they're just, they're not, they, something's bothering them, you know, and they need to be taken care of. Um, I never see them out walking, the dogs. I never, you know, I, I don't, I just kind of feel bad for the dogs, and I would like something to be done. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, members of the board, are there any questions for this witness? No. Mr. Carnes, do you have any questions in cross-examination? Um, well, the only thing I got to say is that you said they're barking all times of nights, but you know, at what time are we talking? I mean, are we talking, you know, for the past three years or four years, or I mean, we're talking last month, two months ago? Because when I did get the complaints, I basically went out and I, I basically took some. Okay, took you've got you've got to let her just answer the question you asked. Yeah. So let her answer um, the question. Yes, let her answer the question, please. Well, um, it seemed to be um, not so much in the morning, but like around two o'clock in the afternoon, two two thirty, until seven, eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. A few times, um, even at eleven o'clock at night, I've been woken up. One o'clock in the morning, I was woken up out of a sound sleep, with the dogs barking. In the summertime, the windows are open; you hear more. Okay. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Oh, no. no further questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for You're your welcome. testimony. Yep. All right. Is there anybody else who'd like from the neighborhood who'd like to uh, come up and testify, please? <coughs> yep. Exactly. We had the icebreaker. My name is Patricia Morrison. I live at 14 Barrett Way. Mm -hmm. And I've lived there for many years. Uh, the dogs. I'm right across the street from the cons, and I've talked to Calvin many times. My sons, I know this is hearsay, have talked to him. He's always very congenial. Yes, I'll do something about it. A day goes by, two days go by, the dogs are barking. Uh, Sunday, the dogs were barking, and then Calvin took a couple of dogs with them. It was quiet, he came back. He was home, his wife was home, I don't know if anyone else was there, and they barked off and on for two hours. And I'm sitting in my living room, and there they are. And these are very big dogs. They're on a run, and they have, I don't know, a wire thing that holds them. And they can go practically to the street. And I'm scared of them. I leave my house. The minute I open my door, the dogs are barking. And they're up on their hind legs, and they scare me. 
I have to look to see where they are to make sure they're not loose because they have gotten loose several times. As a matter of fact, a couple of Sundays ago, my neighbor was, I think, mowing her lawn. That I'm in my house, I hear Mr. Kahn's yelling, I'm sorry, sorry, and he's holding on to one of the dogs in the middle of the road. And this is not the first time this has happened. This has happened several times, and these dogs are big. And he, they're, like I said, they're, two of them are in the front yard, and they're, the thing that they're on is long enough so they can actually touch the street. They're not fully in the street, but they're there. And I, Just, like I, said, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but the complaint that's before us tonight is yes, for a nuisance, is, is a barking is a barking situation. We don't have a complaint yes. for uh, dangerous or potentially dangerous right. dogs. So we, we're really that. not in a position to address that tonight. I'll just keep it to that. Um, Saturday night, I was a little after eleven o'clock. Mr. Kynes came home, and I was sound asleep. I only know that because I heard the the doors shutting and everything. And many times he takes two of the dogs or one of the dogs. I don't know how many now with him because I know he tries, but he gets out and sometimes they're running around and then they're barking. And then uh, Saturday night, one of the dogs was out there barking for 10 or 15 minutes. Now this was like after 11 o'clock at night, so now I'm awake. This has been going on for my, it, no, it didn't happen. Um, I don't recall well, it worked, well, I'm do sorry, it. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. You, All right. so other yeah, times, no by play between the two and no, until the sister and the cross examine. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. That's okay. That's fine. Well, so, I mean, this has been well, going on for more than a few months. And uh, I don't, he, you know, I've seen four dogs. Sometimes they're in his yard barking. Sometimes there's two dogs in the yard barking. Sometimes it's in on, two, on another property. There's two dogs barking there. One supposedly, I don't know this for a fact, is his daughter's, which is also kept there. And this is going on day and night. It, doesn't, it could be early morning if he's going to work, or if his truck is gone, he takes the two dogs and the other dogs are in the house. But you can't even go outside because the dogs are out on the deck. I go to my neighbors to have a conversation with him. You can't have a conversation in his yard because the dogs are barking the whole time you're standing there trying to talk. I guess that's it. Okay. Thank you. Now you have an opportunity if you'd like to ask well, any the questions. The I want to say is that the dogs, I mean, they, they, they should be able to um, be on the back porch. And we're talking the back porch, not the front porch. So uh, right. recently I've been definitely trying not to put the dogs out front. They've been more on the back porch. And that's, that's all I want to say. That they're, they're mostly on the back porch. And if someone should walk by... A dog is a dog's going to bark because and they're I not agree. familiar with that person. I agree. So I've bark. had dogs my whole life, but the dogs don't just stop then. They just keep on barking. And sometimes they bark for 45 minutes, an hour, maybe longer than that. Okay. Well, I'll address that when it's my turn. Great. Yeah. Okay. I will. I'll All address right. it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? My name's John Terrell, and I live at uh, number nine, Barrett Way right next to Mr. Kahn's. And when he says that he puts his dogs on the back porch, uh, my house is right on the water, my summer house, and, and his dogs would then be about 30 feet from my house. And if he's got them out back yapping, I cannot have a conversation. And this has been going on, <coughs> on for years. And I think he's tried to uh, muffle these dogs, uh, but uh, to no avail. Yesterday I had a conversation with a neighbor and his his brother that was in from Las Vegas, and we couldn't talk because the dogs were either fighting or uh, barking. And uh, I have never called uh, uh, animal control until about three weeks ago. Uh, I didn't document the exact uh, um, date, but it was a Friday night, and I don't know how dogs physically, biologically, can bark steady for three hours but they were barking uh, from 7.30 to 9.30 on a Friday night about a month ago. And at that point, I had to call animal control and said, uh, I've had enough. And so uh, I hate to uh, uh, bother you with uh, such a trivial matter, but this should be resolved between neighbors. And apparently it, it uh, can't, uh, it hasn't been done till now. And so we're asking you for, uh, some assistance in that so that uh, we all can uh, 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 get along peacefully, hopefully. Okay, thank you. Yep. 
Uh, any questions uh, for this witness on the board? Yeah, I do. Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. The, only, the only question I want to ask you is that I don't recall you coming to me and say, hey, no, can I you do anything about this? No, I, I you I you have, never come to me. That's I've true. been living in bad way for 15 years, you know? And you, I don't cause no trouble. I don't make no noise. The only issue I think that my, my neighbors have with me is the dogs, you know? Well, and that's I just what, say, how come you didn't just come okay. to me? You know, we could have tried to, you know, make some arrangements to do something to make it more comfortable. Okay, for okay, Mr. Kaiser, I think you've made your point. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Stephen Hurley, Three Barrett Way. Um, arrived there last October, so we're newbies. I worked for 32 years in the city that I grew up in, on the North Shore, and people would move in and want to change things. I don't want to do that. Um, also, people move into a new neighborhood, try to put their stamp on the neighborhood. I don't want to do that. Don't want to pile on with Mr. Kahn's either. But since we moved in morning, noon, and night, the dogs have been barking. And I would gladly approach you, Mr. Kahn's, but there's no way I'm going near your house. So if you want to give me your phone number, maybe we can give you a call and we can hook up someplace, but I ain't going near that house. And so, you know, I'm a patient guy, don't want to cause any problems for any of our neighbors. And we want to be good neighbors and get along with everybody. But uh, probably about two weeks ago now, I called the police and it was about 7 o'clock on a Sunday night, and they said to refer to me, and I left a message for, for the uh, uh, animal control officer. And um, it was answered, and, and uh, that I was informed of this meeting. So, I mean, you don't want to be a jerk about things, but so something's got to be done. And I mean, you know, I feel bad for you, Mr. Kahn's. I really do. But we need a break. Okay. Any questions for this witness from the board? Mr. Carnes? Um, I just, I don't, I mean, I've never met you before, but you said you live at number three. I mean, I don't even know how far away that is, but. Next to John. John separates us. John Terrell. Oh, so that's number three. Oh, that's pretty close. Stop by any time. <laughs> that's pretty close. No, no questions. No more questions. Okay, thanks. I just thought it was far down. Yep. Okay, do we have anyone else from the neighborhood? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Anthony Frangiatis. I live at 16 Barrett Way, directly across from Mr. Carnes and his family. I'd like to reiterate all of my neighbors' concerns in terms of um, excessive barking for multiple hours on end at various times of night. My own experience has included um, the dogs uh, coming at me barking um, on two separate occasions, one late in the evening when I arrived home at night and they came out of my driveway or out of nowhere. Um, I didn't see them. They were loose, two of them, and circled my vehicle barking and jumping and lunging. Um, I didn't know what to do other than lay on my horn. Um, Mr. Carnes came out and struggled to collect the dogs. He did collect the dogs and I got into my house safely. It was quite alarming to say the least. Um, and on a second occasion, I was out mowing the lawn and the dog, uh, the dogs were on a leash. Um, my back was to the street. And when I turned, the dog was barking loose um, on my shoulder or, you know, directly behind me, um, which I had not heard because of the mower. And that was 11 o'clock on a Sunday. Okay. Uh, no questions. Any questions for this witness from the board? No. Nope. Mr. Carnes? No questions. Okay. Thank you. One more gentleman, at least. Andrew Gallagher, number six, Barrett Way. Uh, I have heard the dogs barking. I don't know exactly when. I don't know exactly what time of day. Uh, but they bark more than I would like. And I've never contacted Mr. Carnes or anyone else about uh, the complaint. But I would just like to testify to that. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Any questions? Nope. Nope. Mr. Carnes? No questions. Thanks. 
Okay. Uh, so I'd like to speak? Yes, go ahead. Um, so just for the record, I've been trying to work with Mr. Carnes. He's always been very receptive. He has made numerous attempts to resolve the situation. I've tried to work with him multiple times, um, and he's never given me a hard time. So I just want to say that. You know, he, he seems like he wants to fix the situation, and he doesn't want all of his neighbors angry at him. And so we've tried to work with him. Um, the thing is, is that, as you can see, I'm getting the same type of a complaint from all of the neighbors on the road. It's a relatively short road. It's a dead end road, and it's pretty much every house on the road. A couple of people have complained that didn't come tonight. Um, the police department have received complaints where they've actually gone out there. The dogs are barking, but nobody's home. Um, I've gone there, and I've actually sat two houses down, and the dogs were on the back porch, and I could hear the dogs barking. I actually called Mr. Um, uh, Carnes and said, you know, is anybody home? You've got to bring the dogs in. They're barking. They're on the back porch. They've been barking for over 20 minutes, and he got a hold of his wife and he you know she did come I have a cell phone been again trying to work with him he always apologizes the dogs we have three dogs that are licensed there he says he only owns three dogs some people have mentioned a fourth I have not physically seen the fourth dog um, so the three dogs that are there are legally licensed um, anytime they've been loose it seems that it has been accidental however Cane Corso's are very large dogs. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they're they're yeah, they're, they're big, strong, like the dogs. size of a Great Dane. They're a big dog. They're scary just to look at, and so they may not be dangerous and aggressive. They may just be running around, but just size alone is very scary. And their bark is a very loud bark, so it can be heard as far away as the the beginning houses on the road. Um, so we definitely want to fix the solution. The people on the street have had enough, um, and I do have some suggestions. He's tried to take the suggestions I've made and work with them, so I'd like to, to give him the opportunity to explain what he's done to try and... Yeah, he has that chance. ...rectify the situation, but that's where we are right now. Uh, just so he can, he can address, uh, we'll just sort of cut to the chase here. Usually uh, we wait for your recommendations until after the dog owner has testified. But in this instance, I want him to hear what you have to say. I think that's appropriate. So why don't you give us what you would propose for uh, for the situation? And then that way he has an opportunity to respond to that as well. So these would be my suggestions to the board to try and resolve the situation. Um, Number one, to take all reasonable measures, including but not limited to supervised or limited outdoor excursions, that would include the deck, and or use of construction of a visual opaque barrier between the street and the yard or the deck and his neighbor's property so that the dogs can't see people walking by the house, the dogs can't see people at the neighbor's house, so it obstructs their view. Um, number two, to take all reasonable measures, including but not limited to possible use of a muzzle, if that's what it takes to stop the dogs from barking. Um, number three, in addition to the above measures, to supervise any outside excursions between uh, prior to 8 a.m. and after 9 p.m. so that there is no barking. So literally, if those dogs are out there um, after 9 p.m. or before 8 a.m., somebody is with them, they're literally doing what they need to do and being brought in and not allowed to bark. Um, in addition to that, because we've had numerous loose dog complaints, I would ask that the dogs be humanely restrained and that the dogs be confined outdoors in a securely enclosed locked pen so that we no longer have problems with the dogs getting loose. It could include the deck, but it has to be in such a manner that these dogs cannot get loose. Uh, look, just any questions for Cheryl at this point? I do have one myself. Uh, have there been any, been any leash law violation citations issued? He actually has multiple citations been issued for both loose and barking, and right now we have $475 in outstanding fines. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, I am concerned that the complaint relates to, to barking dogs, and that's the only nuisance complained of here is, is the barking in the actual complaint. So I don't know that we can really act uh, in terms of restraining the dogs until we get 
a subsequent complaint that identifies them as dangerous or potentially dangerous dogs. So I think we're kind of hamstrung in that regard tonight. Uh, but at this point, uh, Mr. Carnes, you've heard, heard everybody speak. Uh, what would you like to say in response to what's been stated tonight and also in response to the recommendations that the animal control officer has made? Well, the recommendations, I, I agree with those. I agree with those recommendations. And um, I did put together something that I wanted to read. My daughter's going to read it for me. But That's um, fine. The, uh, the animal control uh, person, Cheryl, I would like to uh, take her recommendations and, and do that. Because I think if, if I did block uh, the porch where they couldn't see um, John on his side and the other side, uh, it's really a dead end on that side. But I can block both sides so that there's no visual, they can't see anyone. And then that would probably limit their barking. And um, then there's some other things that we've done, and, and it's going to be in the letter. If you don't mind, she could, if she could read that for you. No, absolutely. Yes. Just identify yourself, ma'am. Absolutely. My name is Kayla Carnes. I'm Calvin's eldest daughter. Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay, so he has prepared a written statement, and um, I'll read it on his behalf. Thanks. To all this matter, to all this matter who may concern, my dog had four puppies 14 months ago. Until about three months ago, I noticed, my dogs, I noticed my dogs were getting bigger and barking when people would walk by. I thought it would be better to put them on the back porch. I also purchased an indoor kennel, six feet by 10 feet, and a six foot by 10 foot outdoor kennel. I also purchased a bark box for which the is, inside. Which is here, it's a bark box. And a bark box for the outside. I realized the barking is a major, is a major problem for my neighbors. I am doing everything I can to fix this problem. I also invested in cameras These are the box boxes. so I can monitor my dogs while at work. I can see them, I can hear them, they can, and they can hear me. This is the camera setup that I just purchased so I can see them. Yep. Last week, my kids enrolled the puppies into classes for multiple behavioral issues, the main one being barking at PetSmart in Buzzards Bay. At this time, I have three dogs, the mother and two of her puppies. I will continue to work on the barking and their overall behavior. I will invest into a dog walker as soon as I can find the right dog walker. And I am interviewing now using the Rover app. I want to extend my apologies for the barking and making my neighbors uncomfortable around the neighborhood. Sincerely, Carnes. Okay. Thank you. There's one more. Uh -huh. There is, there is one more. This is from another neighbor who couldn't be here, and um, this is written on his behalf as well. Okay. This is Robert Collins. It has been my experience with the dogs here that they are friendly and curious young pets. They are generally quiet with respect to pedestrian and intrusion. And while may, and while may be intimidating, they have merely come, cl come close and have stopped and have accepted petting. Sincerely, Robert Co Collins. Okay, thank you. And I, I also have the, um, the receipt for the classes, for the training classes yep. here, and the receipt also for the dog kennels. Which we here. have two large kennels. I'm gonna put those into action right away. It's, it's, it's actually right now, it's inside the garage, but I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to put it right now, you know, because it's, it's, it's six by 10, so it's pretty big. I have two of them but I'm going to install them. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any questions for me or anything? No, no thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you. So, so taken in sum, uh, you, you don't, Mr. Carnes, you don't dispute that the dogs uh, have been barking excessively? No, I don't dispute it. Okay, I and you, uh, I did hear you say, I think it, twice, that you agreed with the recommendations of the animal control officer and that you would, uh, you would go ahead and undertake those? Absolutely, absolutely. But recently, I've been doing as much as I can to keep them quiet and not have them out in the yard. They're not in the yard during the day. When I leave for work, they, I take them in. And, um, and probably up until maybe a month, maybe a month and a half, I don't leave them on the back porch anymore at all because obviously it's, 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 it's getting dark at 6 o'clock. Um, it's getting cold. So they're not on the back porch. They're inside the house. And so uh, the barking should be... Definitely, uh, it should be different from what it was two months ago when it was the dead of the summer at 90 degrees, and you know, I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but it was pretty hot. I couldn't keep the dogs in the house, and I have to work too, so. But I'm willing to do what I can do to make this, uh, this, this barking issue go away. Okay. 
Any questions for uh, Mr. Carnes from the board? How, how old are the, the puppies? They're 14 months. So, so yeah, they're, they're, they're full-size dogs. Yeah, they're, um, they're pretty big and, and for 14 bark months. Box, is that a barking collar? Is an anti-barking yeah, collar? Yeah, one is a barking collar. I have a barking collar it, for one of them. Does it affect them at all or no? The, the barking collar works, but I think they... Uh, probably about two weeks ago, one of them tore the barking collar off the other one, so I had to buy another one. Mm -hmm. So I have to, I'm going to reinstall the barking collar, and I'm sure that's going to help. The second dog didn't reciprocate by ripping it off the first dog? <laughs> <laughs> but this one is a bark box for outside control, which I, I, I use it. It's so small, I didn't, I'm, I'm looking at it and said, is this thing really going to work? So I'm trying things, too, to see, you know, what's going to work. But this is what they recommend, so I, I purchased it. And I, I think it helps... Um, a little bit, but the only problem with that is it's battery operated and it goes dead pretty quick. So Good I have to keep changing man. the batteries. And this one is for inside. And so this one also, it, it does okay. It doesn't, it's not foolproof. It's not 100% foolproof. So, you know, until they're, until they're trained to um, not tear up the house, then they won't be in their kennels. But when they're inside, they're in the kennels, yep. you know, because I have to control them. They have to learn. That's why we're putting them in school to train them properly. So you have outside kennels. You're going to have stockade fencing so that, or some sort of fencing that they can't see over. Yes, on the, on the back porch, because that's where they'll be primarily. Yeah. Thank you. Definitely. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Mm -hmm. Mr. Carnes at this point? Yeah. Any final questions for the animal control officer? Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, I know I'm not part of it, but the, uh, you said there was outstanding fines. What's, what's your recommendation right. with those? So he can appeal the fines. It's going to go through Wareham District Court at this point. It's out of our hands. All right. has, a, has an appeal been filed? Uh, we were just discussing that today. One of the things, uh, just for Mr. Carnes' benefit here, uh, we have passed a bylaw that allows us to tack town fines onto uh, basically a property tax bill yeah, uh, right. and collect them that way. So we, we do have uh, the ability now to go ahead and collect them. I know this sounds counter to, to, to my usual stance, but uh, I'd much rather see the money going towards these measures than, than a, a fine. So if it's, he's purchasing things and that's helping out, I, that's where I'd rather see the money go, but that's just me. Oh, Derek. Wow. Oh. Write this down. <laughs> Take his temperature. He's feverish. Yeah, Can I get a picture of you on video? Yeah, this? exactly. Uh, I like that idea. Yeah. <laughs> He's the cheapest yeah, person so you've ever run into. That's, that's kind of what we're getting at here. Mr. Cons, I want to tell you something. We had somebody before who owed fines and was persistent about not paying them. And in any result, we took the dogs away and we wouldn't give them back until we got our money. So just so you know, that's an option that's available to us. So not that we want to hold on to those big dogs. No. <laughs> we take, we're going to send them to Derek's house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it costs me more to feed them. <laughs> I, I don't think they're going to fit my truck. I'm just saying. <laughs> You're not going to fit in the truck. You He's already got a big truck. dog, so what's three more? But anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, I want to prevent the problem. I don't want to uh, continue to no, occur I, understand. fines. I'm not going to try. I'm, I think you had your I'm daughter. Prevent uh, the problem. Yeah, you've got to come up to the microphone, actually, because it's not being picked up out there. Okay. I thought that it was an option for the money to go to all of these, um, all of these options for him. Never been a, no, no, a fine is no, a fine. No, typically a fine is a fine. We were told I mean, that. Derek has just offered that to you, though. Yeah. So yeah. That's offered. great, and I, I thought that that was something that we could so, have taken advantage so of. So what him. happened when he first came in with the very first citation is I told him, you know, my goal is to resolve the situation, that I would hold the citation for 10 days, and if I received no additional complaints, then I would not put the citation in, because we all want the same thing. We all want the situation resolved. But like I told Mr. Con today unfortunately the complaints continue to come in so these were understood new completely complaints. understood yeah okay thank you very much okay thanks that is true um angie has a, another question apparently yep thanks <clears throat> i'd just like to ask a clarifying question we all identified ourselves by name and address and there was one letter that was read into the record by robert collins that wasn't identified by address, and I'd like to know if we have that address available. 
Yeah, she. Do you know the address of Mr. Collins, yeah, please? Yeah, Le- Levin Barrett Way. Eleven. Eleven. He's a tenant. Yes. Eleven. He, he's yes. a tenant at Eleven Barrett Way. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The owner of Eleven Barrett Way is actually here. Okay. Uh, okay. You want to close the hearing? Yeah. Are there any other questions? Movie closed the public hearing. Second. Okay. Roll call vote. Alan. Yes. Jim. Yes. Mary. Yes. Patrick. Yep. Me. Yes. Okay, uh, just to reiterate the, the recommendations from the animal control officer, take all reasonable measures, including but not limited to supervised or limited outdoor excursions and or the use of, construct, and the use of construction of a visual opaque barrier between the street and yard. So that's just some kind of fencing that Definitely. obstructs yeah. their view. Uh, to take all reasonable measures, including but not limited to the use of a muzzle. Uh, And the third one, in addition to the above measures to supervise any outdoor excursion prior to 8 a.m. or after 9 p.m. daily, so as to assure no excessive barking occurs. Uh, Alan? Are we going to impose a time frame when they'll come back well, as far as whether this is working or not? Well, well that, would, that would result in a subsequent complaint from the animal control officer. That would be I mean, cause the they process. Could, you could be three or four days down the road and they could have a complaint again. How long to comply with the orders? Is that what yeah. you mean? Well, I, I think the, the, when, when the orders are issued, they stay in place. I mean, these aren't something, this isn't something that goes away as it is the case with a potentially dangerous dog where it's deemed that for two years and then it goes away. No, no, no it's not. saying give no. them two weeks to comply and get a fence up. And yeah. stuff like, yeah. I want to make sure the neighbors know that there's a time frame and if this isn't yeah. working, they have some rights to, to get a, To get a fencing company in or to put a fence up, I mean, I'd give somebody 30 days, to be honest with you. I wouldn't give two weeks. You're not necessarily going to get somebody, especially while the weather's still decent and they're out, they're flat out now trying to get stuff going here. Decent. I think for that, for that aspect of it, he's going to need some time to get it done. I don't think it's fair to expect him to get it done within a week. What, what do you think is fair? A couple of weeks, I think, is is sufficient because I, I, I think that's very important, and that's going to help with the uh, the barking. Okay, if you're willing. If I get a couple, couple of weeks, weeks, I can do it within a couple of weeks. I can get a fence barricade on the back porch. Right. I'd suggest that we go to three weeks so we can get the barrier up and everything everything settles and, and at that point because that's even two weeks is a little tight to get everything in place. Yep. But again, I want to make sure the neighbors are, are secure and they feel safe in what's going on. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I move that we move. Uh, accept the I just, I, I just had one observation about number two here. Yeah. Uh, I am concerned about using a muzzle to silence dogs in the summertime. Uh, that interferes with their ability to breathe in the heat. Yeah. I think if the other countermeasures are taken, I think if he uses his uh, bark, collars bark collars and gets them to stop ripping them off each other, yeah. uh, that he'll, he'll have the kind of success that would uh, remove the need to use a muzzle. So I don't know that my, my personal feeling is I would not muzzle a dog in the summertime. Yes, well, the muzzle was only if no other options other worked. Okay. Yeah, I think she made that clear. Okay. I move we approve the um, conditions set by the, uh, the, the officer and um, that we give him 21 days to comply. Okay, we have a motion from <coughs> Patrick, seconded by Allen. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, 500. You will get a letter from the Selectman's office uh, stating that, that we had this hearing, uh, that we had these, uh, th- that you agreed to these conditions and these are what the conditions are. Okay. So, you know, please, please do your best. I will. I will. Uh, I'm sure this wasn't pleasant for you. No. And I'm sure your neighbors would have had something better to do tonight as well. So Absolutely. we hope never to see you again in this regard. I hope not. And I'll do my <laughs> I think best. We're all on the same page with that. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Great. it. Thank Thanks you. Everybody. And thank you to all the witnesses who came tonight. All right. And when you leave the room, leave quietly, please. All right. Because we got a long schedule. I'm sorry. All right, next up, I'm going to move to uh, Jackie. Why don't you come down? Um, Jackie's here for a charter review committee interview. Um, we actually put this off for Alan. That's correct. So that he could be here for the, uh, the vote. For the vote. Okay. All right. Now, does anybody have any more questions of Jackie? Not directly. Um, one piece that I'm concerned about is the time frame 
that we set while I was away for the Yom Kippur, we went ahead and voted on something as well. And because we're into November, December virtually now, there is no way that a charter review committee is going to function and have something ready by the first in May for actual even reports going to be tight. Maybe. I think we can have the report in May, but I think we basically need to allow them to continue. And if they want a warrant out, let's come back to the fall town meeting. Okay. Uh, actually, we can't change our vote. Change. We have to put it on the agenda. Yes. So I'll put it back on and we can talk about it on another time. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, but in the meantime, how about Jackie? <laughs> I'll make a motion up front to go ahead and approve her for it. I've gone through her application. I'll second that. There's no reason motion not made to. by Alan, seconded by Jim. Is there any more discussion? Nope. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Thank you so much, Jackie. Jackie, I appreciate thanks you. for coming tonight. Yeah, Jackie, and thanks, thanks for coming. Really great. <laughs> and you were, it was exciting to have you. Uh, I'll, <laughs> and thank, well thank you for your interest. That's what I told all the other applicants. Good luck. <laughs> All right, we're going to go back to announcements and see if we can get this stuff out of the way in a hurry. First off, citizens' comments. Is there anybody here to talk to us? All right, come on down, Madam Moderator. Is she Madam Moderator or is she Citizen Smith? Yeah, it might be. Okay. Thank you, um, Claire Smith, Town Moderator. I just want to let people and remind them uh, that town meeting is Monday, but I just wanted to alleviate some things that uh, people are feeling about electronic voting. Nothing about town meeting is going to change in any way, shape, or manner other than the way the vote is taken. It's pretty simple, and actually, um, we will have, it will be a one-page instruction of, um, we'll have these out in the hallway. I actually did a 28 by 36 poster that we'll put up there. It is on the motion slides so that as people come in, um, they'll be able to see very easily what they need to do. So what's going to happen is we will go through town meeting in the exact same way that we do every year. Um, the motion will be up on the screen. They can debate it. They can talk about it. Uh, when there's no more discussion, I will call for the vote. And when I call for the vote, then it's time to vote. And you either press button number one for yes or button number two for no. And there'll be a, a, a time that they can have to, to place their vote, and they can change the vote at any time during that voting period. And what you'll see up on the screen is this, the motion will change to a, a, a different slide that has the motion, but it has a timer on it. As people are voting, you'll actually see the votes coming in, and you'll see how many no yeses are coming in, how many no's are coming in, and it just will just add up. And when we get to the point where we feel that all of the votes are pretty close, a timer will come up on the screen for 10 seconds. And I will then say to you, you only have 10 seconds left to cast your vote. When that 10 seconds goes down to zero, voting is over, it's instantaneously, instantaneously noted on the, on the screen what the vote is. So it's pretty simple. Um, the only thing I would ask is if people try to come a little earlier because they do have to pick up their handheld device um, and they have to check in. And the devices are on a lanyard so that they can put it around their neck so they don't have to sit there and hold it. They won't drop it on the floor. But I think the most important thing that we have to remember is at the end of town meeting, we need to get them back. <laughs> <laughs> um, because if not, we have to pay for them. So um, it's very important. Um, I'm hoping that we have a mechanism that afterwards, because they are on lanyards we're working on, that they can just hang them as they walk out of the room. And that prevents them from getting tangled because we have to ship them back the next day. So we don't want to have to spend two hours untangling uh, lanyards, so we're hoping to just have some sort of a device where they can just walk out and hang them. But it's pretty simple. It's not hard. Um, I know, you know, a few people have asked, well, you know, I, I don't get this. What's it going to do? Um, you can't take these home with you. It's not going to turn on your TV. It's not going to open your garage door, and it's not going to work with anything else except town meeting that night. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that people will come a little early, um, and if they have any questions, we still will have the tellers. They'll be able to answer questions if they have them. I'll be available to answer questions. But I think this is going to be, you know, a, a fun thing for people to try and um, get a sense of whether it's something going forward that they'd be interested in. You did take one thing away from us, you know. 
What's that? You know how we all try to add up and be the first one to get the totals? <laughs> Everybody's going 12, 11, okay, 82, 85. <laughs> I try to figure out the two-thirds vote. And, yeah, you know, exactly, uh, yeah. You know, it's instantaneous. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it, it, it's just going to, you know, I think what the, the interesting part is you're going to see what the vote, how it's going as it happens. Yeah. So it's, it's very quick. Um, and so I'm looking forward to it. I hope the voters are too. And, and um, hopefully it will also speed up town meeting a little bit. I think that's I've impossible. Been <laughs> Claire, Thank where, you. Where are we going to see the results? Is it going to be up right on, on the screen? screen. Do you know they? how we have okay. the, the motions on the right screen? Right behind us. Okay. Um, so what happens is you have the motion up on the screen and that is going to be the same way that we do it. It's just the motion so that people can talk about it. They can add their comments. They can ask questions. The minute I say we call for a vote, that changes, and it will have this bubble. It will have a yes bubble and a no bubble with the motion. Okay. And you'll see as Tiny the votes come bubbles. in um, how, how the vote is coming. So it's awesome. pretty quick. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for all your work on that. All right. Thanks for all your work on Announcements. that. Announcements. Alan. Okay. Um, two things. Claire actually sent me something to read first. Yep. We have Grumpy's 5K. With respect to Grumpies, you have to register by October 10th in order to be guaranteed to receive a t-shirt. That's nice. We'll have some t-shirts available for those who do not meet the registration deadline. Can't guarantee sizes. First prize will receive a bluebird house full of cranberries to honor Bob's legacy of, of nature. Second one, Ben Franklin. In addition to the presentation, we are raffling off a colonial dinner with Ben Franklin, and three lucky winners will be drawn after the presentation presentation sorry on Friday evening those three winners each will bring a friend so the total of six people will enjoy dinner with Ben Franklin on Saturday evening uh, dinner will be served at the Marion Music Hall Front Street Marion Mass that Saturday evening Claire the event is at the high school, high school on Friday correct correct um, there's actually two presentations one is for the high school students gotta get close to the mic yeah. um, <laughs> Rob Tobitus, who, play, who portrays Ben Franklin, is actually from Philadelphia. Um, he'll be arriving on Thursday. Um, he will be doing a presentation at the high school for the high school students uh, in the morning. And then we will be entertaining him. He and his wife have not come to Massachusetts. They've ever been here. So we have some things in store for them. And then Friday night at 7 o'clock is the presentation at the high school. It's free. He's very interesting, he's very good. I don't know if any of you came and saw George Washington last year, but these two men are amazing. He will tell you things that you never knew about Ben Franklin. And he looks just like Ben Franklin. Um, and then on Saturday, we're gonna take him to Faneuil Hall, we're gonna walk the Freedom Trail. Um, and I'm sure that that will be another fun day for he and his wife. And then like Alan said, uh, we are raffling off uh, a dinner with Ben Franklin on Saturday night for three lucky winners and two friends. I believe it's going to be a full course colonial turkey dinner because Ben wanted the turkey to be the national bird. Speaking of this, did you think anything more about how you would like to do the presentation for when you go to um, England? No. England. That's on my agenda for after the day after town meeting to work okay. on that. Actually, um, but okay. uh, That's just fine. to let people know that um, Howie and I are actually going to Wareham, England. Uh, the end of March, I know it's town meeting time, and I know it's going to be a stretch for me to get everything done and, and ready, but we had to work around the mayor's schedule and town council's schedule over there. So we're probably going to leave somewhere around the 21st of March and stay until April 4th. Um, so what I was thinking of, um, and actually I'd like to ask this board if you have any ideas, I would like to send a box of something over from this community. So one of the things I thought of is maybe doing some sort of proclamation in a formal journal or a book and then passing it around town and let townspeople sign it to say that, you know, we're your sister town and, um, you know, we as residents welcome the opportunity to be that. So if you have any ideas, please share them. And you know, I'm, we're, we're both excited about it. We're looking forward to it. And they're looking forward to having us too. So if you can come up with anything, just let us know. And, but that was one thing I had mentioned that I thought might be nice is to do, you know, the people of Wareham uh, are interested in becoming your sister city. And here's all our signatures. So right, we could you. pass it around to different groups or that kind of thing. But Okay. It was a thought. I just haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Alan? Thanks. Okay. Also, uh, on the, the holiday while I was home praying, etc., for the Day of Atonement for everybody here as well. Um, <laughs> I'm glad somebody was doing Well, that. we're off to yeah. New Year, so I can go right at this again. Uh, unfortunately, that morning, uh, Michael Bird passed away. And then at 1030, Tuesday night, my friend Joe Leggett passed away. I'd ask for a moment of silence. Whoa. Thank you. Jim. Jim. Um, we have a um, Cavan Marion Wareham Regional Refuse Disposal District meeting tomorrow, five o'clock, Marion uh, Town Hall. And um, things are moving uh, forward there. Um, I think most of you know that Marion's considering withdrawing from the district because they already have uh, curbside pickup as part of the municipal services. And um, if we need to go to a, a greater cost, uh, they don't think it would be in their benefit to do so. Um, myself and Carver at this point are still intending to try to move forward. and and uh, provide a service at a reasonable cost. Um, so I want to continue on that. Uh, quick note, Land Trust is having a couple of things this week, 1027. Tweedy and Bonds property, a mindfulness walk. Um, you might consider that, 1 to 2 p.m. And a trail day on 1024, uh, same property, Blackmore Pond Road, 230 Blackmore Pond Road. That's all. Thank you. All right. Uh, Peter? Nothing. Thanks. Mary? Um, yes. The Onset Bay Association, the Glen Cove Hotel, and Watermelon Alligator Theater Company present Who Done It at the Glen Cove Hotel. Murder on the Pentulant Express. Um, Saturday, November 2nd, 630 to 930 p.m., crudités and hors d'oeuvres will be served. Cash bar, $35 per person or $60 per couple. Onsetvillage at gmail.com for info. And I've also been told that this murder mystery, no one solves. So. Um, the other one is uh, Wednesday, October 23rd, 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., the Kindness Rock um, Project Night. This is at um, 196 Onset Ave. This is with the Onset Bay Association. They would like you to RSVP. I'll give that information to um, the press here to make sure they have it. Pretty sure you do. And that's all I have. All right. Uh, we're going to move on to Gateway Motors because... Uh, we're going to do board comments also. Huh? Do board comments. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're going to have to do it after, okay? Let's get this out of the way. Then we'll get back to it. All right. Um, I'm going to move to it because I just don't want him waiting here all year for this. Especially since we're probably going to have to continue the hearing because he's not done with the planning board, as I understand it. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Uh, last time we went through this, well, to give background, um, I, we were here in June. Um, and my name's John Mello, by the way. Sorry. Um, we were here in June um, to apply for a Class two license uh, for 379 Main Street. Um, and we were granted that. We got uh, planning board approval. And then... Um, You're moving it to the other building. Right. We're just moving it to another. We had a tenant express interest in renting one of the property uh, buildings on the property that we um, were planning on using, that we applied to use. Um, so it made sense financially for us, and I, we think it's going to be a good tenant for the, the town. Um, so we decided that it made sense to move over to the, another building on the property. So that's all. Can I have a motion to open the hearing, please? Motion made by Mary, seconded by... Second. Peter. Uh, Alan? Yes. Jim? Yes. Mary? Yes. Peter? Yes. yes. Okay, so we open the public hearing. All right, so now I understand you're going to change from one property to the other. Uh, yes. Uh, the but the building. plan may change as you get through the planning board. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's not a whole lot we can do with it at this point for you uh, because we got to see what the changes are, obviously, right, in order to make sure... Look, that doesn't mean that there's an issue, so please don't understand, don't take me wrong. Okay. <laughs> uh, the uh, one thing too is is that you don't have any service on site, 
So you have to have a contract with somebody who's doing the service for the vehicles. Okay. Which I know you don't have either, so you need to get that as well. Okay. okay. Does anybody have any questions they want to ask right now before we continue the hearing? No, the property, um, obviously the lower piece is uh, being rented out to, uh, I think it's uh, uh, Barton's or whatever it is, Correct. over on Marion. They're storing boats there. There's another building that's being stored, some cars there. and I imagine there'll be some retail as well as the used car up, up on the top level. Right. And I think you're still working on the microbrewery for the fish? Yes. Yeah. Correct. So, it's just a matter of seeing what the layout is for the park. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Yep. It's, it's just a formality, but mm -hmm. I really don't like to sit and you know go ahead and approve something and then waiting for another committee. Then it changes, committee, and we got to do it again. It changes, whatever. Yeah. And I think we have the, a policy coming up about special events, which really goes back to the same idea. Anybody coming before us, it should all be locked in before we make our decision. Correct. Thank you. So. Just a quick question as a matter of protocol. Uh, is this a continuance so that these don't have to be done again for the next you one? You don't or? have to do those. We're just going to continue it to another date. Okay. okay. Motion to yep. continue. Okay. And let's, um, let me go and look and see what we got here. Uh, I got to look at my calendar. Here. Land board meets in can't two weeks. Next, can't do it next week. No, I can't do it next Probably week. We will not meet on the town meeting night. Yeah, because they won't meet on town meeting. You know what? Um, let's move it up to. It'll be the second. It'll be the 19th. It'll be the 19th of November, okay? Okay. So we'll, we'll, I'll put it on the 19th. And that'll give them time to finish up what they have to do and we'll be able to move on, okay? Just as a comment, if for some reason you're not ready for the planning board, give our office a call so we can reschedule it. Okay, I think we are ready. I think we just had to push it back because the engineer was not going to be available last night. Okay. All right, a motion to move the hearing, uh, to continue the hearing until the Jim 19th of November. So moved. So moved. All right, by Jim. Seconded by Alan. All right, all in favor say aye. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry, roll call. Yes. Yeah, uh, Alan, <laughs> Jim, yes. Mary, yes. Peter, Patrick, yes. All right, so that's it. We'll see you on the 19th. Sounds good. Thanks. Do you want Thanks. those green cards as a clerk? Yeah, please. Yeah. Yes. That way you don't lose them and we don't yep. give you a hard Keep time for not file. having you. Yeah, because if, if you lose them, we could, you know, you won't be happy. Thanks. All right, I'll thanks. All right, right. so it. now let's go back to board comments. Do you want, oh, that's okay. And then we're going to get to you. <laughs> okay. Mr. Swenson. <laughs> oh, actually, do we have... Do you want to take care of the other one? You know what? Mr. Yeah, Shifoni? you know what? Can we do that? Let's do that. All right, let's get Bob out of the way. Uh, uh, what do we got? Barnacle Bobs. Barnacle Bobs. Why don't we do that real quick? busy night. That way everybody will sort of be out of here and that'll be good. All right, application by Barnacle Bobs, DBA, Barnacle Bobs, and or BB's 2424 Cranberry Highway for a change of hours. We, we see the change of hours on the application. Uh, yes, and uh, good evening, uh, members of the board, Tim Schifoni. Barnacle Bob's doing business as BB's Bar and Grill. Uh, as you indicated, uh, Mr. Selectman, I am here uh, with regard to a request for a change of hours and basically just tweaking it somewhat. We've experienced uh, significant difficulty with staffing lately, particularly the um, lunch. So the request before the board tonight is to open later, but also to stay open later as well. Uh, and also, uh, because we've been doing more and more functions, uh, if there is a function that would fall outside of the hours that I'm currently asking for, then we would come back before the board uh, for special or specific permission for that particular day, that particular function. Um, generally speaking, uh, we're looking for Monday 4 p.m. to 11, Tuesday 4 to 11, Wednesday 4 to 11, <coughs> Thursday, also 4 to 11, Friday, 4 to 1 a.m., Saturday, 2 p.m. to 1 a.m., Sunday, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. There's also um, several requests in there for um, holidays to be closed, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and I believe that uh, there's a request from December 25th through December 31st. You know, on that. Uh, I don't have the December 25th through Christmas. Sorry, I don't have that on there, but all the other dates. The closing are dates are easy. Yeah. We can handle that anyway. I don't have the closing dates on here. Go ahead, Alan. We have everything else. You sure you want to close Christmas Eve? 
I mean, New Year's Eve, sorry. New Year's is one of the biggest days for bars. No, in- he's not closed New Year's Eve. It's 4 p.m. to 1 a.m. I stand corrected, Mr. Sleckman. It was to December 30th. Thank you for that. But you did mention you said New Year's I did. Day. I did. Because if he stays up until 1 o'clock at night, that's New Year's Day. Right. Yes. And that was um, correct, and I appreciate that. Thank uh, you. Aspect. Okay. Motion. I move to approve. approve. Second. Motion to approve is by Alan, seconded by Mary. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. abstaining, it's unanimous. Thank you so much. Good luck. All right. Now let's get back to uh, the uh, board comments. Alan. Okay. As I said, you know, we had our, the holiday of Day of Atonement, so I'm going to be at it pretty hard for a while. Um, I'm really tired of a lot of the stuff that we put out, that gets put out in public uh, through newspapers, through blog sites, etc. It's getting to a point where the town is making a real strong effort to make things better. We're trying to rebrand the town, and every time we turn around, we have things come out with you know not only just negative attitude, but just f- incorrect, false information, etc. And I don't know about any of the other, you know, selectmen here, but I really get upset when I see people attack, you know, elected officials, which we always, we're subject to it anyways, 24-7. But we have other officials, we have town administrator, town council, uh, department heads, employees. Uh, It's completely unnecessary and unproductive because most of the stuff that's put out there is simply wrong. It doesn't have correct information. People throw stuff out there because they like to have controversy. And it's getting to the point where this country, as it's being run today, is pretty bad. And the way everything is going is pretty bad. And then we have to sit here at our level and have to take a lot of it. And I'll give you an example. I got a call from our local newspaper. Uh, Asked me about the bridges. And I says, why are you calling me about the bridges? Because that was a born thing. So, said, well, you work with Serped. You're in charge and stuff. I said, yes, but Serped only goes as far as Warham. That's the easternmost piece. We have nothing to do with the, the bridges going across the Bourne. That's strictly the town of Bourne, the Army Corps of Engineers, and the Cape Cod Commission, which takes care of roads on their side. So I explained it twice to make sure they understood that, but I'm not sure that registered. We have an article that comes out on the uh, Warham Week. Uh, states that uh, I said that uh, if the bridges, you know, basically the bridge, uh, Mr. Slavin says that the bridges uh, would probably cause a problem for where him, you know, with the traffic. What I did say was when they asked me, what do you think overall? I said, if they're able to actually replace the bridges and take care of the traffic and all the bottlenecks on both sides, we will end up most likely losing pay- business because traffic will not come through Wareham, they'll go right to the highways because it'll be easier to get over to the Cape, which is the real problem. And of course, it was what happens is they make a quote, they don't give you the first piece of the, of the puzzle of what they're asking for, they give you an answer, and it's like, a, it, it's like having like the National Enquirer throw stuff out just to sell newspapers, etc. And it really bothers me because it's been going on for a long time. And my other quote was that uh, I didn't think in my lifetime I'd see the bridges ever built because I know how the municipalities work, I know how the government works, and I'm 75, and within 10 years, I'm not sure I'm not going to be here or I won't be here in this position anyways. So my comment was, in my lifetime, I'm not going to see the bridges done. And we have people that turn around and go to the blog site, which I don't believe Warham Week needs to be a, a, an actual uh, viable business and allow the blog site for someone to basically make a comment you know, and saying that we should stay out of it. My answer initially was we are staying out of it because we have nothing to do with it. And we have to sit there and people throw it out there and listen to it. We have people that continue to say that the selectmen messed up on the marijuana, the retail stores, etc. We didn't mess up. If you want to know who messed up, the state changed the rules. But at the end of the day, if everybody looks in the mirror who went to town hall when the zoning articles came through, and I'm not going to blame the planning board, they put the zoning in place, the individual people at the town meeting made that decision. And I'm just getting tired of this keep coming back and coming back. We work very hard. You know, I'm not going to get into the reimbursement or anything else. There's things saying that, you know, we're making money out of the marijuana or other people getting funds out of the marijuana. It's just not the case. 
I'm just tired of sitting there and having to listen to it. I just don't believe we should have to do that. We do the best we can for this town. We're trying to grow the town. We're trying to increase the tax base so the citizens aren't constantly banged away at the increase in taxes. And you're not doing us any favors at all. And I'm just tired of it. And I'm not going to sit back and take it anymore. Well, the thing that bothers me is always when they, when they have articles in there and they let people write stuff at the end, you mm -hmm. know how they can comment? Yeah, that's and most problem. of the comments are so off base, it's unbelievable. They don't even know what they're saying. Yeah, it's the same three basement dwellers. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Well, but, well yeah, it might be, but I mean, that is crazy. It's not you that. allow those comments in there from people who have no clue, and they just they go off on a tangent about nothing to do with nothing, but whatever. It, it's, not, it's not that. It's just Thank the you. idea that... You know, I, don't, the, I usually don't, so that, just you so know, you know, the, the, I don't usually read them at all. The problem is the newspaper itself knows what's going on or can ask us the questions and they can correct their own their own blog site which they don't do so they're promoting negative negativity and for me i don't know why they exist then all right jim you're up i'm just <laughs> a fact of all no 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 you know where do i go um, with that one well no you know um, <laughs> well uh people whether we like what they say or not they have a, a right to um, sure express themselves and um I, I, I like my colleague here just said, um, you know, I don't really read most of them. And most of them from the same people. So, you, you know, you, you look at it, you, you scan them, maybe you chuckle. You know, I don't read them usually at all. But, so. um, you know, um, it's just that I hate it. It's just, it's, it's, it's just something that happens. And I, I, I do not take it to heart personally, what, what a lot of people say. You know, I don't take it personal. So that's all I need to say. I'm just going to let, I'm just going to move it on to Mary here. <laughs> and, uh, Mary, do you have anything you want to uh, say on board comments? I have nothing to say, no. no. Okay, Peter? Not a word. <laughs> all right, well, that's uh, good. That'll move us on a little quicker here. All right, next up. Uh, let's see. Um, it's best. Gateway Motors, we took care of that. We took care of that. Next page, discussion and vote whether to recommend or not to recommend Fall Town Meeting. Do you have anything yet on any of the stuff that you want to talk about? No, the balance sheets were submitted to the Department of Revenue officially today um, for free cash. It's, it's such a tight time frame. I don't we'll know. Fall. To, I hope we get it tonight at Town Meeting. Yeah, that's. I I would love to see it a couple days earlier, but you know, it's already Tuesday night. We'll they'll have Wednesday and Thursday to ask a few questions to get it before Monday would be. Um, you know, that's that's a bit of a gamble. What, what's so we'll the worst see. that can happen? We have to push it off till spring. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's. Yeah. It's sort of anything, the point. Where, is there anything that's you know, crucial? Uh, no, I mean, I can you. tell you all the departments will tell me they're crucial, but I think well, we will manage. Thank you. So. All right. All right, then we're going to move on to ratification of contracts uh, that we just voted on in executive session. Um, we also have one other one, right? Don't we have the uh, one other contract that we need to add in here? Yeah, but you don't have it on there. You don't so have you it, so you're going to have to... You don't have it on the agenda. have to do it another time. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we have... I got the contracts for, uh, let's see, um, the Wareham Clerical Union, the uh, wastewater treatment facility, uh, municipal maintenance, and uh, the two steelworker unions. Okay. Move so to approve those five, uh, which we already approved in open session. This is a confirmatory vote. Okay. Oh, four. There was five. 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 There's two five. There's steelworkers. Two steel workers. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, motion made by P Peter, seconded by Jim. Is there any discussion? Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstaining? It's unanimous. Okay, so they're approved. All right, next up, uh, special event policy. We want so, to Richard just can get out of here. No, he said he'd wait, so I'm going to let him wait. <laughs> <laughs> he, vol he volunteered to wait, so we'll, we'll move on. He's actually entertained by this? Okay. I'll get a few of these things out of the way. And that way it'll just be you and us and we'll be happy. Uh, All right. So uh, special event policy. If you look at the special event policy oh, that, yeah. uh, that was sent to you today, the reason why I, I put this on and to make this change is because one of the things that goes on is they come in to get their special, this is the way, it, it never was like this, but somehow it got changed. 
but they come in to get the special events package and then they go out and they go to see the chief and uh, municipal maintenance and whoever and in the meantime the uh, the women in the office send out uh, emails uh, to each of the departments asking them if they approved them well obviously they haven't because you know they just sent them out right so and then they have to keep following up and keep chasing them and keep doing whatever and then what happens is eventually they get information back but it doesn't get to us on the sheet like it always did we used to have one sheet and it would say police chief and say what they what they wanted and then next to that it would be municipal maintenance and would say what they wanted so if somebody in here asks a question like they did last week how many police officers or how many this or whatever, the answers are right there on the sheet. Mm -hmm. So I changed the policy to allow for the sheet to go to the, in, to the group. They take the sheet. They go see the police chief. He writes it on there like he always used to years ago. I don't know how it got changed. They would write it on there, okay, two police officers, so much time, whatever, right? Because they got to go see him anyway. Then they go see municipal maintenance. He writes it on there what they have to do. The sheet comes back. They hand it in at the office. Yay, what do you know? Everything's here. Yep, you checked off all the boxes. Great. They put it on the agenda. It comes to us. It's in the folder. Everything that they have to do is in the folder. No questions asked. And we didn't have to keep sending annoying messages to people that are extremely busy to check to see if they're if it's ready yet or if it's you know they finished it or whatever because of course you get the people calling after well is it all set yet is it going to be on is it whatever this way it eliminates all of that okay and that's why i changed the policy and i hope you guys will go along with it motion to approve second. there you go motion um, made by okay, made, go made by alan seconded by mary discussion I just have one question. Uh, we're going to have to look at the application packet and make sure that that mirrors what the policy is going forward. So the, the motion needs they, to be to amend be, the application yes, as yes, well. Yes, the application is going to be fixed so that it, it has it all the spaces. It can't be inconsistent because you can't Correct. hand it out to people. And then I agree. They think, wait a minute, the office is going to go around and get my, my approvals. I and totally then, yep. agree. No, it did before. I totally agree. But yes, it's in here. I think we have it in there, the application, right? Do we not? And she put it uh, yes. in the folder. Yep. And doesn't it have the I department things in there for them to fill out? Let me see. If you go to the application. Well, this just has, oh yeah, municipal maintenance. Yes. Harbor see, they're Master, all Water there. Health, they all go with the packet. Yep. So each one of the fill outs are in the packet. So it's very simple for them to take them and get them done. They're going to talk to them anyway. Yeah, yeah. For, for some reason, I don't know why, that all of a sudden, out of the blue, they changed it and the people had to go around and have them signed and then come you know, back. You know, and, it, it, and, it, and then we don't get all the information and there's a lot of difficulty. So anyway, I have a motion made by Alan, seconded by Mary. Is there any more discussion? Yeah, I, I, there's, um, I do in the sense that, as I spoke earlier, um, there's a couple lot of other Policies. policies that we really before we do this we should work on and take a look at them the use of town property done in uh, 2002 I think an extraordinary services fee done and again in 2002 uh, which is kind of summed up in the new policy I'm not against it um, th there was a, some minor minor changes that um, I thought uh, would help in cleaning it up. Uh, to, you know, it's like the fifth line down in the, okay. you know, no, the town do. reserves the right to require fees paid in full time of the application. Then another part, it, uh, there's a retainer bill will not be collected. However, if the town is required to clean up um, after your event, you will be billed. And then the retainer fee is down in the uh, municipal maintenance application. So I'm a little confused on that. I don't. Yeah, know. we've had. Yeah, that that we didn't notice that discrepancy about three years ago. I think. Of, so I think that, that should be cleaned up. Um, uh, I think. Uh, didn't just we? Before, you know, and then and then just bring it back. I'm not against it. You know, just cleaned up. Well, Let's look at the other two policies. Can we eliminate them to get them off the policies page? So again, when someone's looking at at something, all they see is this one. They click on it, and it tells them what they need to do. And it makes, like you said, it makes them the responsible party to get the signatures and not our um, administrative assistance. Go ahead, Ellen. 
I think, Jim, there's a, a newer policy, too, on using uh, town property, because uh, I remember we redid that maybe within the last six or seven years. You did it when you were chair. Yeah. So there's another one in there, too, Barry. So I, it just would be nice to look at it, them and, and, you know, again, just make it clear. And if we well, don't need those. Let's put it on the agenda for, you know, right after town meeting. And yeah. Just list the policies. Jim can pull the numbers because he and I are supposed to be working on 8810 as well. After town meeting. I've read after it twice. Meeting, Jim. Yeah. All right. So it's, it's, I'm not against it. Well, I'm going to implement the change anyway, Let's put just so you know, in. okay? I just want it's, everybody to know. I'm going to implement the change so that it goes that way. It won't have a policy directed to it, but at some point then we'll have to clean up the policy, okay? Yeah, we want to clean up the I don't, We don't want to have to sit there and go through and say, well, you didn't get all these signatures you need. You didn't get the okays. Well, you did get them, but they don't explain what exactly. it is. Exactly. So let's just fix it for now as best we can and then get it done all together. That's fine. Okay, so we'll we'll do it that way. If that's fine, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. And then you can uh, and then you come back when you guys get it ready, however you're going to do it. You two are going to look at it like you sure. look at the other one. Put them together however you want, and then we'll make it a policy. Yep. But as far as the as far as going forward, I'm going to make sure that this is the way it happens. At least for, for now. the time being, okay? All right. Is everybody okay with that? I mean, that's basically what they were. I, yeah, at least it's it's something in place that, you know. Um, yeah, it'll be an office again, thing right now. Right. It'll become a policy. Right. Okay? Because I'd, I'd really like Does to clean up Does that sound okay? Do you want to change right. the motion? Huh? Yeah, you can rescind, change the motion. I'll rescind my motion. Okay. So, and Jim, you reached, you, who, who seconded it? You did? Yeah, I So guess. she withdrew a second. <laughs> I'll just make I a motion that this, we just change the process for now. For now, okay. No Motion price. made by Alan. Seconded by? Second. Seconded by Mary. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. abstaining, it's unanimous. Okay. So that's the direction to the so office. That's the direction to the office. Okay. All right, so we're going to do it, and then when you guys get that, that together with the other one, you can bring it back, all cleaned up and pretty like uh, whatever. Alan's good at that. He went through all the policies before. I don't know how we missed that one. <laughs> Take a while on the other one. Okay, next. All right, next up. Um, town business, let's see, what do we got? A couple of things quick. Uh, discussion and vote on the town of Lakeville's animal shelter thing. Can you yeah, do that's, that? That's just a motion to to agree to the terms of the thing. I've already talked to them. And it's, do this yeah, it's the same deal. The same deal. That's, what, nothing, we, that's what we take Nothing we can do it about it. It's where our dogs go, and we really don't have much choice. So can I just have a motion? Motion to, to accept. Motion approved by Alan, seconded by? Second. Second. Seconded Second. by Mary. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. abstaining, it's unanimous. Appointment of the town administrator as custodian of the November 14, 2019 auction. So this moved. is just ratification of what we already did. Second. Motion made by Peter, seconded by Alan. Any discussion? I, I just have a couple of quick questions for uh, through you to uh, our town administrator. Go ahead. Are we going to have uh, some reserve, minimum reserve, uh, for for the bid amounts yeah, on these policies? Yeah. So, I mean, re, you know, we usually set something up for each one depending on the value and condition of the property. We work with the. So uh, we will have it. Yeah, in, we in, we had a we've had it all the last ones. Yeah. Do we do we get like do we get to know that or no? Is it because we can't bid on them anyhow, correct? No. Oh. If you want to We're starting the bidding. We can. He can't. Yeah. One. One million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. Okay. Well, yeah. All right then. If if we, if we can bid on them, then we shouldn't really have. Uh, That's why we make him the custodian, so we can bid on them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just, all you right. know, I, I think it's important <laughs> to have a, a reserve, a minimal reserve. That's all. I don't think we can bid on them. Huh? I don't think we can bid on them. Um. I don't know. Through through you then to the council. Can we do that? We have a, a minimal reserve on on a bid. So if, it, if we don't get it, I think we can. Well, we can't set it because well, we would know what to set it at. No. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. Uh, I think the standard practice is that we do set a reserve on all these yeah. properties. Yeah. Nobody's going to steal something out from under the town's nose. Everything's got a minimum number, and if we don't hit it, we'll try again another time. We don't just keep dropping. Well, it would depend, but I would say no. Okay, we'll just, just uh, that's all. 
Just like when you go fishing every day, some days you don't catch one. I call it fishing. They'll, they'll tell you, Jim, too, as part of it when they give the speech in the beginning, if um, as a custodian of the auction, I still have the ability to, on the final number, say no, if I don't feel that it's, uh, yeah. So we usually do set a reserve, and if the bidding goes where it hasn't met our, the reserve we've had for the property, and say no. We haven't had that so far, though. Thank you. Well, All right. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All those abstaining. Unanimous. All right. Now, there's two 61A conversions coming out from Makepeace coming out of uh, out of 61A. One on Charlotte Furnace, map 106, lot L2, map 105, lot 16, and lot 17. Um, the other one is 106, lot L2, map 105, and lot 110. How you doing? Good evening, Richard Serkey here for the AD Makepeace Company. How you doing, Richard? Nice to so, be before uh, you. Nice to see you again. It's been nice a while. To see you, Thank Derek. You. We we're all set with this, right? Yep. Okay, yeah. everything's good. All right. Has, it, has all the different boards sent their? Yes. I believe, except for I believe, there's one that I didn't get information back from yet. Are we over 30 days. And it was. Original request. Yeah, it's been a. It doesn't matter. No. From uh, it was from you know who. Oh. <laughs> Did you ask her? <laughs> no, she. Her response was they would not have a meeting with them. They didn't have a, meeting have a meeting within the within the time frame. So that's the actual response. Days, yeah. so who, that was the response. So. I mean, that's an effective yes. It was okay. Yep. All right. Can I have a motion, please? So made. All right. Motion made Second. by Alan. Seconded by Peter. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstaining. It's unanimous. We kept uh. you late, so your billing hours go up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I think more than happy. Rich, are you looking to get the uh, signed copies tonight? I don't necessarily have to have them tonight. Okay. If you'd prefer to wait until later, you can just put them in the mail to me. Okay. Okay. That and uh, good. I'm sure you've got a convenient notary and attorney Bowen. Actually, you can. No, I mean, I, let I my notary. haven't noticed to well, date things. Okay, well, I'm, Patty, a, I'm Patty, a notary. Patty in my office is a, is a yeah. notary. In, and in, so uh, is in Janet. our office, we have yeah, notaries Janet too. So we have plenty well. of notaries. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we moving use Rich on. For, for the lofty. All right. Any other town <laughs> business not reasonably <laughs> anticipated in the last 48 hours? Out to me. Now, Is just so you know, we do have one thing. Richard. Um, we have one thing for sure, and that's uh, the for the signing of the contract, for the agreement between Make Peace and, and ourselves. You and I have to sign it, Between. but I just want the board to to sign on to approving the, the signatures. Yes. Yeah. So. Well. All right, so that uh, that agreement, agreement. that, that yes. hold, the, the tolling agreement is all set and ready to be signed by myself and Rich. And I just want everybody to know that it's signed and the dates are in it for the meetings. And we're going to start that immediately. And they've already signed it. And, uh, and you've already signed it. I just what was the expiration date again? Hmm? So could I, I have a motion to, so that allow me and Rich to sign the tolling agreement, please? Uh, so moved. Motion made by Peter, seconded by Second. Seconded by Mary. Any discussion? Yeah, can we just get copies of the dates? Can you get copies of the dates? Absolutely, we'll get them copy to you. The we'll get you a copy Absolutely. of the tolling agreement, okay? Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining, unanimous. Okay, done. All right, <laughs> now, Mr. Kill. Swenson. Gonna need to kill a light. One side, one side of the lights, please. And you're on. Sorry about this, dude. It was just a busy night tonight. Absolutely. Was a lot to do. I'm going to try to go very quick for you. That would be appreciated. I'm sure. I mean, it's still not bad. I mean, we'll be, you know, time wise. No, it's not terrible. Richard. Derek can help you. Um, Richard, I have full faith in you that you can execute yeah. this PowerPoint. I'm back Richard. next week. Ran home and did this. On a PowerPoint, really quick, Mary. After you so, wait, wait. Okay, there you go. Okay. Those are too skinny to be me. Do we have handouts? Do you want this stuff? Yeah, the faceless people. You gotta get the rest of the signatures on these. Um, I'm Richard Swenson. I'm a member of the 
uh, Wareham Redevelopment Association and an associate member of the planning board. I'm here tonight to talk to you about the Wareham Congress proposal. I am currently uh, sharing this with different uh, agencies in town and trying to get feedback, and tonight's your lucky night. So the agenda tonight is to define what the word Congress means and what, how it applies to a Wareham Congress, why we should have one, how it integrates with the master plan, what a Wareham Congress meeting agenda would look like, what I consider the keys to success and next steps going, going forward. So first of all, there's been some confusion on the social media and whatnot, and I'm not, I'm not in, uh, locked into this word Congress, but uh, the Congress is one of several definitions is a formal meeting or assembly of representatives for the discussion, arrangement, or promotion of a matter of common interest. And for me, that's exactly what I'm trying to do here. So a Wareham Congress would be a forum for all Wareham agencies, and I use the word agencies here to describe a board, an authority, a committee, a commission, whatever there may be. It would be chaired by the planning board under my proposal. There would be representation from all the Wareham agencies. I'm proposing initially a quarterly meeting, and that might be monthly, it might be bi-monthly, it could be anything, but it would be a public meeting under open meeting law guidance. And the mission of this agency, and this is the key part, is uh, um, agency alignment to the master plan and master plan strategy, and I, the, the word strategy is used throughout the master plan. It's really a task of, that's called out by the master plan to look at those strategies or tasks and prioritize them, assign them, and implement them. We've, you'll, you will see the word master plan in this presentation over and over and over again. There, uh, in my mind, the Wareham Congress is married to the master plan. The master plan is basically the agenda for the Congress. It's a way that the master plan can be a useful tool. It can be implemented. It can be managed. It can be updated. It can be changed. And I'll get into that. We should consider it because it would allow our town to ensure, one, there's an alignment. I've been to a lot of meetings of different agencies. And um, I could tell you stories. I'm sure you all have your own stories about our agencies aren't aligned. They're going in different directions, and we have a lot of them. You'll see that in a minute. We have master plans that have sat for a long, long time and collected dust. I've heard that words from many people. But this would provide a forum for master plan oversight and execution. And it would provide a, a mechanism for town agencies that have common goals and common missions to work together on common goals. Now, how does this Congress and how does this master plan integrate together? I consider it a way to start a roadmap for all of our town agencies, and here they are. I, I'm, I think I've still left some out. But what do we got? We've got seven, 14, eight more is 22, plus six is 28. 28 agencies listed there. I have the Board of Selectmen, the Redevelopment Authority, Planning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals, Finance Committee, and Conservation Commission listed on the inside. I think they're a little more critical to master plan execution, and I'm doing presentations like this to those boards individually. I'll talk to that. Um, but this tells, me a, this tells me a lot looking at this. There's lots of agendas, lots of missions, Lots of goals, and I don't think they're all necessarily aligned, and I don't think we use economies of scale properly to get the things we've done we need to get done. Um, Congress meeting agenda, what would it look like? We would review alignment to the master plan. We would look at the 52 different strategies that are listed in the current unapproved master plan and prioritize them. We would look at those strategies and assign ownership. And there's 52 of them. And if I could get three of them agreed upon, prioritized, and assigned, I think we'd be well on our way to accomplishing something. 
It doesn't take men. There's, there are tasks in our master plan draft right now that I know every agency that I showed you before would raise their hand and say, yes, that's a top priority that I don't think we're working on hard enough. So this is a way that we can assign ownership, start implementing, monitor its status, and finally use it as a vehicle to maintain the master plan. Some people think the master plan is a once every 10 year document. I think it's a living, breathing, dynamic document that should be changed as necessary without any hesitation, but that's my opinion. Keys to success. One, we have to have an approved master plan. We have to have a commitment to execution by all the agencies involved, specifically the six I highlighted before as the key ones. We need to have performance metrics or KPIs assigned for the strategies we are going to execute. We need to have Congress members attending from the different agencies who are empowered to speak for that agency and, and be accountable. And finally, we need to have full transparency. Next steps, solicit feedback uh, on this proposal from all town agencies, and this is what I'm doing tonight. I have gone to the planning board with this on two occasions, and they are, they are on board with uh, pushing it out to other agencies, which I'm doing now. I've been to the Conservation Commission. This, this is my uh, third time. Uh, I'll be going to the Finance Committee and the ZBA after town meeting. I will probably have, I will have a public workshop for Wareham citizens, I will, and may or may not include all the other boards at that time where I have another larger audience um, for the other agencies. I can't go to every agency independently. Um, and then implement, and concurrently to do this, I'm working hard with the uh, planning board right now on reviewing the 2018 final draft of the master plan and getting them on board for ownership. I know you all are reviewing the master plan as well and, and going to be having comments and feedback as, that can be implemented. That's what I have. Um, I have handouts for this. Um, I'd like to leave you all a copy of that. Um, I would like you all to give me feedback on this. I would rather that you did it as a group and give me a set of feedback that you all agree with as opposed to individual, but if you choose to do individual, that's fine as well. I don't know what's going to happen here. This is my, this is my, um, this is me tilting at windmills, if you will. Um, I, I might crash and burn. I don't know. <laughs> but, but right don't now I'm moving. Us. We've all done that. <laughs> but right now I'm moving forward with it. I, I think there's value here. Um, I know that I'm committed to doing it, and I know I'm committing to make it happen if I can get uh, people like yourselves behind me and supporting me. So, any questions? Yeah, I'd like to have the, the paperwork that you have to review and stuff, if you don't mind. Get on another agenda, we can discuss it. And then we'll, I will, I will, and we'll, we'll put it on the agenda for discussion. I will send you... Um, Not until after town meeting, obviously, so... I will send you the, the these are small versions. I'll send you the full size one. Okay. And you can distribute it in the cloud. All right. Thank you. Because you're, because you're cowardly. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. We'll get it on a, a discussion agenda at some some yeah, point, exactly. okay? And I'll let you know. If you'd like me to be here for that, I'd be more than happy to. Well, it'll probably be for us to discuss, but uh, uh, we'll see, okay? All right, thank you. I appreciate your time very much. We'll see how it goes, okay? Thanks. But we'll, we'll get it on sometime, okay. quick. All right? Thank Thanks. you. Thanks for your effort so far. Can thank you. you. You're can working hard. There, Mr. Quite Swenson. a presentation. Yeah, questions? Yeah, Mr. Swenson, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Have you have you gotten the uh, planning board to endorse the plan yet? We still uh, working. Master plan? Correct. No, we're still. Our next You're still working on that. Is okay. November fourth, and I think we'll be done then. Okay. 
Well, there was a bunch of changes that we sent that we thought we, I know Alan had some, you had some. Some. I had some. We all had some changes <laughs> that we sent over there, so. I know, kidding. It was only like 54. Come on now. <laughs> I give you a lot of credit for, uh, I give you a lot of credit for uh, taking this task I know on. it was 50-something. It, it, I give you a lot of credit for taking this on. <laughs> you know, hey. We'll see no, good, good. Yeah, Richard's a rock star. All right, next up, town administrator's report, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, today, and Mr. Swenson was there as well, I was able to attend the public hearing for House Bill 4070, which was the, the act um, that uh, Representative Gifford had put forward. I did testify on it, and I testified in favor of the bill because I think this community deserves the opportunity to vote on that if it is to come forward. Okay. So uh, it was good, and I believe the... Uh, there was positive testimony. There was, uh, Senator Pacheco did, uh, did testify against it. I was not there for that time, though. And it's, it's uh, kind of brought up something that we've been, we've been talking about. And you hit on it, too, Patrick, when you were talking about, uh, or I think, or, or someone about how, in a way, loss of traffic is loss of revenue for some of our businesses. Alan. Alan, excuse me. And, um, you know, when when the final couple miles of Route 25 came in, it rerouted traffic around Wareham, which was good as traffic relief, but we see what's happened with Cranberry Highway, and there's been a lost revenue. Um, there is an opportunity to put forward into the bond bill or the CIP the Route 25 interchange that's been uh, been proposed, and I think uh, I would love to see this Board of Selectmen put in a letter specifically requesting that Route 25 interchange because that area that they're talking about for um, for the potential uh, casino things like that. If that's not working out, that would be an amazing location for industrial park and businesses for this community. So when you get on the, the CIP or the bond bill, if you will, that can, be, that can be years, take years. So I think it's incumbent on us to, you know, grab, grab the bull by the horns, if you will, and request that that be put on the bond bill. Alan? Um, just for basic information, even though the CIP has, you know, been voted on, it's never permanently locked in. So this is something that can be put on there. All this does really is, by us going ahead, is saying, okay, if this project can happen, you know, this particular interchange may or may not be able to be financed because if there's no money in place, it really is, it basically becomes a moot point altogether. And I think it's something that was, if I remember right, Patrick, this was approved a long time ago for that off-ramp in that area, and then it was pulled. Um, so, you know, it's not an easy thing to do because from a political standpoint, we have people for the casino, not for the casino, people against the horse track, whatever. Um, what's really important is that what's happening, and I really appreciate Richard going up because I already got feedback that they were very impressed with his presentation and with Derek's. I thank both of you. Uh, the bottom line here is that if they go ahead and change the, the status of this Class 1 license to a modified version, all this does is it opens it up for the whole Southeast region. I'll also make the comment that I wrote a letter as a chair of the Serpent Commission in favor of, of them at least looking at this, because what it does is it opens up the possibility for all 27 communities. It doesn't make Wareham a lock or anything else. The change in the ruling would simply go ahead and allow any other community to go ahead and have a proposal for the same type of thing. And that's really, as my, as my position with SERPED, that's my job is to open up something for the region, not for Wareham per se. And I want people to understand that what we're doing here is opening up for the region because it will benefit everybody if something like this goes anywhere. Obviously, it would be nice to be in Wareham, you know, because it's a $5 million increase in our tax base as far as income coming in. And it would take care of a lot of things, but there are a lot of people for and against it. So the bottom line is this is strictly an opportunity to have something in Southeast Mass. There is no way right now for a class one casino to be financially stable and survive. 
and this is, a, this is an opportunity to put something in Southeast Mass. Southeast Mass, very much like the Berkshires, are always ignored. We get the end of the stick always, and it's very discouraging when our state senator who represents us makes a comment that he doesn't think Wareham should have this because it's, this particular thing is like geared to Wareham only. And it was very discouraging to hear that today. Well, you know how I feel about that gentleman yes, in I general. Know. So I, I won't make, my, make myself too public, but, and he knows how I feel about him as well. We, we, should, uh, <laughs> we should reach out to him and, and you know, present, make a presentation on why it would be beneficial to, to consider putting it here. And, um, well, you're not going to change he's, his wait, wait, mind. Wait, but he's had his plans for a long while. Taunting is taunting. And I think, that's all I think, he cares about. But, but you know what? I, I think we as a board should reach out and say, look, we deserve, we deserve this opportunity. Put it in writing to him. You know, the reasons why, rationale, why it would be a good thing. And, um, you know, what's the worst it could do? I mean, he, like you said, he represents us also. I mean, we're a voting block. Maybe not as large as some of the other areas he's, like, he's representing, but um, we should be given due consideration, and we should let him know that's how we feel. Mm, I mean, that, that... Yeah, I will, we'll put it on the agenda, and we'll talk about it. I think that's a good idea. I won't make a comment because I already had this had discussion with the senator before when this came up, okay. and I'm not no. going to put it in public right now. I saw that letter that he it sent be embarrassing us for everybody. that he wanted to put on, that he wanted me to read in, into the public record. Uh, when they I came here for that too. thing, I saw that, that letter, and frankly, I was horrified by it. It's so selfish, uh, you know, that he, he cares only thing about Taunton and the rest of us can go hang from a tree somewhere. But whatever. So, Mr. Chairman, um, <laughs> well, we digressed a little there. Um, I'd like to see if we could get support for. Um, you want to put it together? We'll put it on agenda. We can vote. Uh, interchange. Well, time's of the essence. Would would it be okay if I worked with uh, one of the members to to put that forward while we while we wait for yeah. an affirmative vote? I don't so, see why not. Does anybody uh, have a uh, problem with that? No. I think it's. No. Got to work with the. Uh, Selectman Slavin on this because we'll yeah, send sure. it up to Secretary Pollock and get it going. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. And, you know, and, and frankly, I don't think, I mean, that's, you know, you're doing, your job is, is to promote and care and take care of the town. And I don't really think you really need our permission to ask that kind of question. But if you need it, you got it. Yeah. Well, as thank far you. As I'm concerned. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. You know, that's, uh, I, you know, if you weren't doing those kinds of things, I'd be a little upset. <laughs> All right. All right. Next up, liaison reports, please. Um, Jim. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, hopefully you haven't been there in a few weeks either. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Even the, even the media is leaving. Even the media wants to get out. <laughs> she says, I'm out of here. You guys shut the lights off on your way out. <laughs> yes. Leave us in the dark, please. Okay. Um, we've been going back and forth on Merchant's Way with the control gate, you know, for the railroad, you know, for, in order for uh, the redevelopment authorities to redevelop uh, basically that back area, which uh, Peter might say something today. They were, the redevelopment authority was officially certified by uh, the state today is being yeah, for the second agency. time as we discovered, but that's okay. That's okay. Two is we'll, better than we'll none. Do, we'll make it an annual event, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's that's a real positive piece because it allows that particular group of people to go ahead and actually do things in Wareham. They don't have to be a 501c3. They can just go ahead and do things. A lot of people don't realize what a redevelopment authority actually is when it's set up that way. So I've been frustrated for about three years now trying to get. Uh, just the simple thing of allowing us to have what we have is two control gate crossings on the back of Merchant's Way so we can develop a boardwalk possibly and change the whole dynamics and maybe get enough money to somehow take Main Street on one side and turn it to the waterways and take advantage of what we have there. Um, I've gone around to everybody at Mass DOT from uh, right under Secretary Pollock all the way back down to Jim Eng back and forth three times now. It got so frustrating, I finally went and called Susan Gifford up. And I said, Susan, I, I'm just tired. Can you make a phone call and see if you can move it? Because I have a good contact there, and, 
and I haven't got an answer in like four weeks. So Susan made a call, and obviously what happened is I've had three phone calls and two emails in a day and a half. And basically we're going to be meeting sometime next week to discuss actually getting the gate crossing approved, uh, which I haven't, I've got the things here, but I've never had uh, that kind of response at all. So just to let everybody know that it looks like we're going to finally, after all this, after three years, getting this simple thing done. Uh, on Friday, Ken Buckland met with uh, Mass DOT uh, down on the uh, bike path, also the potential of a rotary at the end of Minot Ave, Depot Street, and uh, Great Nick. And we also talked about a few other things. The other piece that was talked about was the Route 6 and Swiss Beach uh, traffic light potential, which we had put off. Well, it's back on the table again, so let's see what happens. Mass DOT is going to do another traffic study. If the numbers come out okay, they're going to push ahead on their own to see if they get this done, which means that we don't have to wait probably for four or five years for the Route 6 uh, modification of going from a potential four-lane to a three-lane with a turn highway. So I know there's people who have been asking this for a long time. I think this would be the fourth uh, time that we sit, tried to do something, and, and we've been basically stymied. So that's another thing that's come through, which was pretty good as well. The bike path is $5 million. It's a ridiculous amount of money, but that's what it costs to build anything today. The rotary, turns out, um, is when the state came down, they decided because of the railroad crossing, etc., it would cost about $2 million to actually do the rotary. Um, and I got a call from SERPA earlier today uh, because I thought the original project included the rotary. They recommended putting a rotary in. It turns out that uh, if we had known that, there was actually over $2 million available in the what they call the TIP, which is the Transportation Improvement Program for 2020. We actually could have got this done. But what's happening is Mr. Buckland and Mr. Menard are going to go ahead and file uh, with the state the required forms with Mass TOT to put this move this particular piece separate on its own. own. Uh, there's money available probably over the next three years that we may be able to slide this in because the bike path is not scheduled to be uh, done till 2024. So that's another piece that's come in. Um, the FCC, as we already know, uh, we have an issue as far as Verizon because we're getting reimbursed at 5% and they will affect uh, WCTV because the other contract is 4.5. The five percent we're getting means that if they decide there's certain things that get added to the actual five percent they're giving us, that's going to get cut back against us as well and the station. Community events committee uh, basically approved uh, "Don't Trash Wareham's bill for this coming this past year, and the Cape Verdean uh, also, uh, and that was to pay. We haven't cut the check because that's the accounting. We did send a check out to uh, the, uh, the chamber. Uh, and that wasn't really, the, we approved it a while ago because the county was trying to get the books and everything else closed. They hadn't got to it yet. It was cut and sent. Good. So we don't have to listen to that anymore. MMA, uh, we had our annual meeting as far as policies. I think I mentioned before, Chapter 90, uh, increased funding, Chapter 70 school program and zoning articles as far as housing, etc. I gave Derek the information. This is a, the governor talked about a $1.5 billion school package reform. And I gave Derek all the numbers, and if he wants, he can explain it better than I, I can right now. But it sounds great on paper. At the end of the day, it puts a tremendous burden back on the town financially, the way it works out. Do you want to say anything? Yeah, unfortunately, all the increases aren't state aid. It's a minuscule portion mm -hmm. of it. And it's just saying the town has to provide more money to the schools. As we're already doing um, a greater percentage, it means it doesn't actually generate any more money to the school since we're already above the minimum net school spending. It'll just raise that minimum net school spending number, and it doesn't actually guarantee more money. So I think the increase in the first year was supposed to be about 600000 of which the state would give 55000 Yeah, And they wanted the town to come up with the rest, which... Doesn't want. My comment would my comment would simply be that write your senator, write your local uh, house of representative for the state, uh, expressing your concern about this particular bill because it's not going to help us at all. It's going to put us in just the opposite direction, and that's good enough for today. All right, James. No, okay. All right, Peter. Uh, continue to make progress out at Littleton Drive. Uh, Selectman and WRA member Bruce and
Quick, Buckland of the WRA, and I were out there today once again with people from Mass Housing. Uh, the housing sort of uh, the former architect, but she, she's, she works as a sort of a housing uh, development specialist with Mass Housing, uh, was out there today along with uh, the consultant that they use uh, who's going to work on drawing up the request for proposals uh, to solicit proposals from developers uh, for the WRA to review uh, and, and begin sort of the uh, site selection process. You know, we want to get some input, we want to see what the developers have to say and then go from there. But uh, we're starting to make some, you know, get some, get some things going here. Mass Housing is very interested. Uh, this was the first time the housing specialist had seen the property and she seemed quite enthused, so that was a good thing. Mary? <laughs> Mary's done. Mary's, Mary's done. Mary's she's Mary's she's a crispy critter. Yeah. All right. Well, done. Uh, well, I went to the uh, groundbreaking at the hospital last uh, was last week, right? Yeah. And it was interesting. Uh, they are ready to go, and uh, they're they're going to start going ahead. We, I got to stick the shovel in the ground and throw some sand in the air, and the whole thing. It was kind of interesting, uh, but. Uh, it's nice that they're going to put a lot of money back into their community up there, and they should have a state-of-the-art emergency room when they're through, which is really nice to have. I mean, you know, a lot of towns don't have their own hospital, that's for sure, but we certainly have ours. And I thought the, the thing that interests me the most about it was, I don't know if you've ever been in there, but, you know, they have people come in a lot of the times that are, uh, you know, come in. Look, nobody goes there because they're happy to go. They go there because they're having an issue, right? All right, so a lot of times some people will come in and they're a little loud or a little, you know, agitated or they came in with the police because there was an issue or whatever. Well, they're actually going to have sort of a special, special place in there for them so that the rest of the people don't have to be on, on pins and needles while all the screaming and yelling is going on. So I thought that was really nice because I've been in there when that was going on. And, uh, you know, it's not a fun thing, especially since you're there because you don't want to be there, you know, to begin with. But anyway, so it should be a nice facility when I think it's all done. Uh, it looks to be great, and hopefully it'll be, it'll be a good addition to the community. All right, next up, um, what do we get? Approval of some minutes, right? Uh, yes, I... Uh, move that we approve the meeting minutes from October 1st. Motion made by Mary, seconded by Peter. Is everybody here? Yes. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining, it's unanimous. Move and to adjourn. of course, the last thing is, Peter says he moves to adjourn. I'll accept that. Second by Mr. Slavin on the end. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining, it's unanimous. Thank you, Wareham. Sorry it was a long one, but it happens sometimes. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>